Hi, it's Eric Lee with Starfish Coaching. A lot of what I've learned in business is from reading some great books. So I'm launching a series for my YouTube channel where I'll summarize some of my favorite books to help you understand some important concepts for business success. This video will cover the five dysfunctions of a team by Patrick Lencioni. The book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team, is a classic read for anyone trying to build a team. This could be for business owners, managers, or coaches. I've referred a lot of my clients to read this book, and in this video, I'm going to give you a summary of the key points of this book, and at the end of the video, I'll share my perspective on it, including three tips to help you build all the levels successfully. This is a short book written in the form of a fable, talking about a technology company that is struggling to grow sales. In this story, the leadership team is not working together and does not come to any agreements, which makes it hard for the company to move forward and also causes negative morale in the team. In the book, Patrick Lencioni uses this executive team to illustrate the various dysfunctions of the team. This pyramid shows the model of a dysfunctional team and the various steps that are required to be met before a team can get results. The first level is absence of trust. At the bottom of the pyramid is absence of trust, or as I like to think about it, you need to first build trust before anything else happens in the team. This level is foundational, and Lencioni talks about needing to build this first before anything else can happen for the team. If members of a team is unable to show their weakness, then there is no trust. It's only when teams can be vulnerable to each other that they can start to admit their mistakes and will be willing to ask for help. Two. Fear of conflict. If the foundational layer of trust is not there for a team, then there will be a fear of conflict, which in turn results in team members incapable of engaging in debates or openly voicing their opinions. This means that the team completely avoids conflict and the business issues does not get fully vetted because people are afraid to bring their real opinions to the table. So whatever decision is made for that issue, is not the best decision because it has not been fully vetted through a good debate. When you have a good team bonding, you'll see that members are willing to speak their mind because there's a comfortable level of trust with each other. They will debate an issue for the goodness of the company and not for personal motives. When a team can do this, good decisions can be made on behalf of the company's interests. Within a leadership team, everyone brings their unique perspective and it's all valid and worth noting. When all perspectives are on the table, then the issue is fully vetted and can have the best chance of a good decision. Three, lack of commitment. If a team is not able to have healthy conflict, then they will not have commitment. Imagine the debates that happen around the boardroom table. If team members do not have a chance to provide their perspective around an issue, they will not feel fully committed when that final decision is voted on. If they've had their fair share of expressing their thoughts on an issue though, then even if they are outvoted in the final decision, they will feel better about it. They have had their chance to have their perspective heard. The key point here is that once the team votes on a final decision or when the ultimate decision maker makes the final decision, then the whole team needs to be on board and committed to that. By having trust amongst each other, not fearing conflict and being able to fully debate it, then you get the best chance of agreeing to that final decision and beating on that same drum. Four, avoidance of accountability. Only when the team is fully committed can people be held accountable. Imagine if you didn't get a chance to debate an issue fully or have your opinion heard, then you will half-heartedly go with the team decision, but when it comes to take action on that decision, you will not follow through because you're not completely sold on the idea in the first place. And deep inside, you will always have a hesitation. So if you're not fully bought in on that decision, then you likely won't make your peers too accountable because you, yourself, did not fully commit to that decision, even if you didn't tell anyone. This is not full commitment. And that is what leads to inaction and non-accountability, which ultimately affects the results of a team. Top level, inattention to results. If the team members don't feel accountable, then they will put their own needs, their ego, recognition, career development, They'll put all that ahead of team goals. This results in the team losing sight of the company's goals and the results are not achieved. Those are the five levels and now I'll give you my perspective of it. In the book, Patrick Lencioni describes the five dysfunctions in the negative tense. 
I find that it's actually easier to think about the five levels in the positive tense, and this illustration shows it in this way. Regardless if you're looking at it from a negative or positive tense, the key thing to understand here is that each layer needs to be built one level at a time. There's no skipping a layer and you can't go straight to results. Each layer builds upon each other. So first, your team has to have trust in each other. This is foundational. And how this looks is when people are willing to be vulnerable. They are willing to admit fault and own up to their mistakes. This is probably one of the hardest things to do in a workplace setting. Who in their right mind would want to tell their peers or even their boss that they made a mistake? That would be a no-no in many people's minds. Yet, this is what's needed to build trust. A team that is willing to be vulnerable with each other, knows each other's strengths and weaknesses, and can celebrate and embrace both sides. There is no judgment, and in fact, team members support each other's weaknesses. When you have this, you can have level two, which gives you healthy conflict. With healthy conflict, you are able to debate an issue fully without personal agendas. The result is a final decision which had the benefit of the full brain power of all the team members, and this is for the greater good of the team. When you're able to have healthy conflict, then you can have level three, which is commitment. Because a team who has had a chance to share their perspective, those will be more willing to get on board with the final team decision, even if it wasn't the decision they debated for. When you can have the full team committed, then you will achieve the last level, which is results. A good analogy for this is like when a Dragon Boat team is in sync and rows in perfect unison. This is the secret to a successful Dragon Boat team, and that's the same for an organizational team. When your team can do this, you get maximum results. As a leader of a team, I would give you these three tips so that you can achieve these five levels quicker. One, the most effective way to start this is for the leader, be it the owner or CEO, to show the vulnerability first. It sets example and tells the team that it's okay to admit that they're not perfect. This is when trust starts to happen and allows your team members to ask for help. Two, many people avoid conflict because it's uncomfortable. This is especially true if you have the peacekeeper type of personality. Instead, you need to encourage and embrace conflict. The tip here is to set ground rules that debate should always be on the issue, not on the person. Remind your team that they are debating for the greater good of the company and their personal agenda should be put aside. Three, when a team reaches a decision, remind everyone that they are to fully commit to it. If they feel that they're not ready to accept the final decision, then have them make their argument and once it's voted on or the ultimate decision maker makes that decision, then all team members have to be a good sport and go with that decision. They have to be united about this and toe that line on this decision. I hope my book summary has helped you understand the main idea that Patrick Lindsay is trying to get across about successful team building. I would still highly recommend reading this book. It's written in a fable and is quite short, so a very easy read. In fact, I recommend adding it to your collection of books if you're an entrepreneur, manager, or coach. If you read it, please leave me a comment and tell me what you thought. And if you like this video, please click that like button and share it to your network. You will help me greatly as I build my channel and allows me to bring more of these tips to you.